All right, everyone, we're gonna do this streamer style. I'm no YouTube streamer, but frankly, I figured this was a, a decent format for me just putting information out there verbally for you guys to ingest. Now, why am I making this video? My company, Helio, is equity crowdfunding on a platform called Start Engine. Right now, we're, we're down to the last two weeks in our campaign. But what does that mean? Basically, that means that we are selling equity to you, uh, any random person around the world, uh, assuming you go on to Start Engine and make an account, you can purchase equity from our company and, and join us, be part of our company financially and be part of our mission. I wanted to make a, a, a quick informal video explaining why you might do that. And I thought, what's the best way to do this in, in such a way that's organic and, and not so forceful? And I was like, I guess I'll get in front of the camera and explain why myself, the CEO and one of the co-founders of the company, what excited me about the mission in the first place? Why did I start the company with my co-founders? Why do I get up every day uh, with a ton of passion and work really hard to build this company and serve more customers and build more technology? All these things that get me up in the morning and really excite me about what we're doing, I'm gonna try to convey that to you and hopefully that sparks a little interest and, and maybe you decide to invest in our company and join us. The first thing I wanna to touch on is very important. It's Helio's mission. So what is it that Helio is trying to do? Really simply put, Helio is trying to create technology. In our case, it's primarily drone technology right now that helps people grow more food at lower cost and in safer ways, both for the humans involved, so people eating this food, the people growing the food, but also the entire ecosystem. So here at Helio, when we're making a big decision about product development or technological direction, we are always asking, A, is this helping people grow more food more productively? B, is it helping them do it in a safer way, both for the humans involved, but also the surrounding ecosystem? So the plants, the animals, the rivers, the soil. And C, is it lowering costs? Is it more economically viable than the traditional methods? And if we can hit all these boxes, these relatively straightforward North Stars, then we're good. And that's that's what drives our decisions. What this leads to is hopefully an entire movement. Of course, Helio is not the only company doing things in the precision ag space, but there should be Helio and many other companies enabling farmers to be just that much more efficient and safe with their growing methods. And so we can get away from a lot of the factory farming, a lot of the stuff right now that's leading to some negative health outcomes uh, and environmental damage. We can steer away from that using these very precise and very powerful automated tools like Helio's agro drones. But really, the, the bottom line is I truly believe if we can get a Helio agro drone onto every farm in the world, we're gonna have more food for everybody, it's gonna be cheaper for everybody, and it's gonna be healthier, both for the people eating it, but the processes to grow it are gonna be healthier and more sustainable for the surrounding ecosystem. All right, this next bit is gonna to appeal to you finance nerds watching this video. So what's unique about Helio is that yes, on one hand, we are a very innovative, tech startup. We are doing things with hardware and software developments and just the way we even position our company that no one else is doing. Very innovative. We're capturing a lot of market share by being bold. But on the other hand, at the same time, we are just fundamentally a good business. When you look at our financials, we have good growth year over year since we started selling our product in the early 2020s and we're, we're profitable. So it's almost unheard of for a startup, especially one in the ag tech space with a heavy hardware component to be able to boast and say that yeah, we've had good growth year over year. We have real sales, real traction, but we're also profitable. So we're able to take that money, the profits, and reinvest them in the company and grow even faster. And this means also that when we get external funding, like from you guys on Start Engine or external sources, whatever those may be, that goes directly to supercharging our growth. That's not a lifeline, oh, we needed this money or else we would go under. We already have a great product market fit. We've launched multiple products. We've got paying customers that we serve every single day, and that's just growing by the day. So I, I think Helio is really primed to grow explosively. And that's because we've been just really uh, clear headed and uh, principled about how we spend our money. The, the decisions we make to grow our company has led us to be profitable. In 2021, we did two million. In 2022, we did three million. In 2023, we did 8 million. And then in 2024, we did about 11 million. And this year, 2025, we're on track for anywhere from 15 to 20 million based on how Q4 goes. But you can see right there, the trend is going up rather aggressively. Certain years, we're, we're seeing a lot of growth, but we've been profitable since 2022. Guys, you're almost never going to find a company in our position, in our industry, doing what we're doing that has fundamental solid financials like we do. It's 
it's almost unheard of. And when we talk to venture capital firms, as we have over the years, they're always shocked about how good our numbers are. So that is a, one thing that's that's rather unique about Helio. That's a really strong selling point for us. So for you tech nerds, I want to go a bit into our product development roadmap. So we're working on a ton of cool tech, really hard problems that once we're done are going to set us apart even further as the true innovators and the leaders in the space. So some of this stuff is is coming out relatively soon this year, next year. Some of the stuff is a few years down the road, but I'll, I'll start with the the more recent things. Traditionally, Helio has focused on developing these heavy lift payload drones. So we've made like the Ares model, for example, it can carry about 110 pounds worth of payload. It's deploying liquid or solid uh, uh, payload or inputs into the crops. So that's one side of the agricultural puzzle that we're solving, the actual application of the, the inputs. But on the other side, you need an efficient way to scout your crops. So you need to fly over your crops with a, a drone that has either an RGB camera or a multi-spectral sensor, or hyperspectral, or thermal, et cetera, or all of the above to identify problem areas. And then that data informs your spray operations, which you do with your, your application drones. Finally, when that's all done, you've done your spray job. You need to fly out there again, scout again, see what worked, what did it, and then iterate and improve from there. So we are now coming out with the drone that does that scouting exclusively. So it's called the Photon. It's a relatively small drone based on what we typically build. This is a drone that's going to be somewhere between the size of a Mavic and a Matrice for reference. And it's going to have an RGB 4K camera on it by default, which can be used for mapping, but also this FPV feed comes from. And then it's going to have a uh, second port, a uh, gimbal port, where you could put an industrial payload on. So you could put a a multi-spectral sensor on it, hyperspectral thermal, you could put a LiDAR sensor on it. So you could do high resolution, hyperspectral mapping, or you could do topography, or again, all of the above. So this is a, a drone that is just really skilled at doing the scouting before, during, and after any sort of agricultural operation. And beyond agriculture, as many of you might imagine, this has an application in the defense world, in disaster response. So um, fire departments, police departments, uh, either chasing perpetrators or locating survivors in some sort of natural uh, natural disaster event. So this this photon product we're launching, which we're going to announce later this year formally and begin shipping next year, is going to be uh, not only enhancing our current core market, our agricultural customers, but it gives us a lot of cross industry appeal as well. All right, this next one is the big boy. So there's a, a phrase down here in Texas: everything's bigger in Texas, and it certainly applies to this next model I'm about to describe. So for reference, our Ares, which is our flagship application model right now, can do 13 gallons of payload. This is about 110 pounds worth of weight. And the Atlas is going to lift three times that. It's gonna have a 40 gallon capacity, and that's gonna be roughly 320 pounds worth of payload. Basically, that means this Atlas can do three times as many acres in a given uh, amount of time that our Ares can. So our Ares can hit up to 70 acres per hour right now, you're looking at about 200 acres per hour coming out of the Atlas. And on the other hand, uh, you could do fewer acres than that, but at a higher dosage. So for these customers that are doing uh, really high application rates, maybe eight, 10 gallons per acre, the Atlas with that heavy capacity is, is your guy. So bigger isn't always better. In fact, we have a lot of customers that purposely buy our smaller drones, our AG210 and AG216, for example, because they need a literally more nimble, lightweight drone to be able to handle jobs more effectively. So the type of work they're doing doesn't require a ton of acres to be sprayed or a ton of payload to be deposited. They need precision, they need ease of access, they need maneuverability. So these drones are great for that. So we are developing a new drone we call the Pegasus, which is essentially going to take the place of our AG210 and 216. It's going to have a three gallon payload. This is about 25 pounds worth of payload. And it's going to have a ton of ease of, of use and quality of life features, making it really easy to pack up and tear down and throw in the back of your car and just get out there and, and get jobs done with. So it's a very maneuverable, lightweight, precise tool for a lot of these operators who are, are in either precision ag applications or often they're in other industrial applications where maybe they're, uh, they're treating right of ways or fence lines in residential areas and things like that. And last but not least, perhaps the product I'm most excited about, which really just closes the loop on the whole idea of drones, is the automated recharge and refilling station. So our internal code name for this product is Domo. We're not sure if that's going to survive till the actual product launch, but that's what we call it internally right now. But 
as I'm suggesting, this is essentially a station where any of our drones can land and charge via contact charging. So they can charge in under 10 minutes, given the battery chemistries we can work with now and the, the power we can put into this thing. And then there, there will be a modular side component, which can do the uh, mixing and refilling of the inputs. So whatever the uh, the liquid is or the, the solid product that the drones are ap applying, this station can supply that to the drone autonomously. So at the end of the day, what, what do you have big picture is a completely hands-free drone system. So we're envisioning a, a station that's weatherproof, that's rugged, that can communicate with operators uh, remotely via cell signal. And this is a, a system that's going to be plopped down on a farm or a work site and will just be remotely monitored and supervised from someone perhaps relatively close by, but they could be literally anywhere in the world as long as there's cell connection, right? And then the drone can just chug along and work and go out, spray uh, either blanket spraying, so doing broadcast spraying a ton of acres, or maybe just doing touch-up jobs here and there when it sees problems arise. But the drone will essentially just live there and it's out of sight, out of mind. There's going to have to be some maintenance and periodically someone's going to have to come and refill the tank with the, the appropriate amount of water, chemicals, whatever that is. But this is going to be a, a mostly hands-off operation, which like I said, is is closing the circuit. We're finally going to have the, the dream of a true drone, something that doesn't require human interference on a, on a daily basis to actually be productive and, and useful. Domo or this automated recharge and, and refill station is going to take us a little bit longer to figure out because we need to make sure this is very robust to, to survive out there for days or weeks on a time without supervision. But once we get it, this is going to be a insanely cool system where these drones are just buzzing back and forth all day. Uh, you could have 10 of these on a farm, for example. You could be hitting thousands of acres per day, all with just a, a remote operator monitoring fluid levels, making sure nothing goes wrong here and there, emergency type of things. Uh, but this will be a hands-off, um, true scaling of our technology. Because once it's out of sight, out of mind, uh, you're going to see a lot of people adopt this technology. If they say, hey, uh, uh, all I got to do is buy it and plop it on my land, it's going to do all the work for me. And that's music to their ears. So we're really excited about this product. We think it's basically the, the the holy grail of the ag drone industry. I mean, drones in general, frankly. So we're, we're making a lot of headway on this. I think by 2027, we're going to have at least early versions of this out in customer hands. Now, the last thing I want to talk about is still very important. It's the significance of US-made drone tech right now in this geopolitical climate and how that leads to very opportune timing to invest in a company like Helio that's making this technology here stateside. So I'm sure many of you have seen the news that there is a lot of buzz about foreign-made drones, the dangers they might possibly pose towards America, both on the defense side in terms of military uh, uh, significance, but also in terms of trade and anti-competitive practices. So DJI, the largest drone producer in the world, accounting for at least 70% of the world's drone market, is a Shenzhen, China-based company. And right now in Congress, there's a bill that states that DJI and Autel, another Chinese company, may have their products banned from operation in the United States based on a, a congressional review that is, that's happening right at this very moment. So there is a, a very good chance that DJI, the, the largest player in the U.S. market in drones, in the global market, I should say, is uh, potentially banned overnight. So that's big news for our industry. But even if that doesn't happen, there is a lot of demand for US-made drone tech going forward. So even if uh, DJI, other Chinese players are still in the market, Helio zigs when they zag. We do things better than they do in a lot of ways. And that's how we've been able to stay competitive, even though we've been going up against these larger, more funded companies since day one. So on the other hand, because there is this uh, desire to have more competitiveness in the space in a U.S. made option. Trump's team recently put out an executive order, which they called Unleashing American Drone Dominance. And this seeks to bolster American drone companies like Helio in two ways. Now, the first way is by reducing regulatory friction for U.S. drone companies and for their customers. So, for example, for Helio, we have to get models that we create registered with the FAA and our customers have to have certain licenses or registrations in order to legally own and operate our drones for agriculture. So our customers would have priority when it comes to processing these registrations and these licenses over operators, customers that are utilizing foreign made drones. So that should lead to US drone manufacturers being able to capture more market share 
and less friction for the overall experience for, for our customers. And then on the other end, and this uh, stuff isn't concretely laid out yet by the administration, but they announced a, a move in this direction. They're going to offer financial benefits and, and other incentives to U.S. drone manufacturers that are making some of this cri critical technology here stateside. So uh, that's going to be working capital through programs probably like the uh, Office of Strategic Capital. And that could also be tax breaks, subsidies, grants, and things like that, uh, non-dilutive funding to, again, bolster American drone manufacturing and really get companies like Helio uh, give us some gas to cook with and scale up our production so we can be more competitive with the, the Chinese larger companies that already have a lot of the market share. In summary, there are a lot of tailwinds, a lot of support coming from the U.S. government for companies like Helio that are making U.S.-made drone tech. And then on the other end, there are possibly uh, uh, some bans and restrictions and tariffs and whatnot that could hinder our foreign competitors. So even if that doesn't happen, we're getting a lot of benefits from the U.S. government and there's a lot of demand in general for U.S. made drones, but it would be even a larger opportunity to invest in a company like Helio if someone like DJI or Autel, et cetera, were uh, severely restricted or banned from our market. That would be basically like the largest player being taken out overnight. So you could understand there would be a lot of market share opened up for a company like Helio to really expand into. Put it succinctly, I really don't know if there's ever been a better opportunity in terms of timing to invest in a U.S. drone manufacturer like Helio than now. That just about does it. These aren't all the reasons why I get up and work at Helio and bust my ass, but these are some of the major ones that, that keep me going that I'm really excited about. So I hope you learned a lot about my company and our vision in this video. And don't forget to go to our page, invest while you can. This is a great opportunity and the timing really couldn't be better. So go invest, buy some shares in Helio, join us on our journey to making agriculture more productive, cheaper and safer for everybody around the world. Thank you. Bye.